that I've had a few glasses of bourbon, let's begin. Just kidding, Ma. Just kidding. Just kidding. No! I'm so sick of your crap! Why do you always do these stupid things? And why do you always announce them to me before you do them? Are you trying to get a rise out of me? Are you happy now? Is this what you want? Just so you know, don't ever, ever make fun of something your mother takes seriously. Hey, y'all. It's James from Fish Tank Fishing. And, uh... I'd like to tell you about uh, the title of the video, Why I Ain't Got No Fishing Poles. And, uh, well, it all started uh, back in the October 2016, uh, the week of the 22nd, I believe, 21st, 22nd. It was the uh, KBS Classic, Kayak Bass Series uh, Classic. It was the championship. And, um, Actually, the 19th was my birthday, so you know it was a big, uh, big deal. I took the whole week off from work and uh, went down there and pre-fished and celebrated my birthday. Um, anywho, um, the first uh, few days I was down there pre-fishing, everything was was most excellent. Uh, great weather, um, catching plenty of fish. Um, I had. Uh, Good top water bite going on. Uh, though honestly, when I first got down there, it was uh, uh, it was kind of embarrassing because uh, I don't do a lot of top water uh, fishing where I'm from here, and uh, so you know I was jumping the gun early. But uh, anyway, I was I was getting great bites, marking lots of spots, and then uh, the first day of the tournament. Uh, rolled around, which was uh, that Friday, which I believe was the 21st, I think, or 22nd, and either way, uh, first day of the tournament, and uh, uh, a cold front had moved in, uh, so the high was, you know, 64, where it had been like 80-something the day before, uh, so it was a big change for the fish. Um, winds were... 13, I believe, that day, gusting up to 23, um, but a uh, steady 13. Uh, so Lake Gunnersville was uh, a little choppy. Um, so I go out uh, first day, I paddle out to my first marker, which is a big grass mat where, you know, I got some good bites. Uh, first light comes in, guess what? <laughs> my mat's gone. Uh, wind came in, blew it, and broke it apart, and it floated away somewhere. Uh, and that happened to be the deal for all the mats that I had uh, marked. So plan B was to go down Town Creek. Uh, I caught fish down Town Creek uh, in practice, and they weren't big fish, um, but you know they would have met, met the minimum and uh, filled the limit. You know, so I go down to Town Creek, make my rounds, and uh, don't catch anything. So I'm coming back up Town Creek, and you know I decide I'll go to the other side and, and fish the bluff again. So I'm going Caddy Corner across Town Creek because uh, if you've never been in a kayak before, um, you don't want to position yourself where you're taking uh, waves or any kind of turbulence on the side of your kayak because it's it's much easier to what we call turtle the kayak which is, you know, flip it. Um, so I was going caddy corner, and the waves were probably, I don't know, six, eight inches. Um, you know, just enough to break over the, the side of my kayak when, uh, you know, when I tap into the catch one that way. Um, but anyway, I was going caddy corner. Um, and then out of nowhere, um, I'm guessing a larger vessel up on the main lake had uh, gone by or something uh, um, because a wave didn't, it did not hit me directly on the side or, or this way. It came kind of behind me basically, just, just out of my sight um, because, you know, the next thing I know I'm out of the corner of my, my uh, eye there, I'm seeing a wall of water. Uh, you know, 
out up here, and I'm sitting in my kayak. So that's a big wave, probably two and a half, three foot. And uh, so, you know, there was no no recovery from that whatsoever. Uh, I turtled the kayak. Um, my inflator uh, went off. I was wearing one of those auto inflate vests. Um, popped up. About uh, had my head squeezed off from the vest, but uh, managed to grab onto my kayak. Um, and my plan was to kick to the good side of Town Creek, the one with the restroom and and the boat ramp. Um, after that, I I really did need the restroom before I think about you know the boat ramp. But uh, that didn't work out. Uh, the the current was too strong. Um, yeah, I just wasn't making any progress, so I kicked with the current and toward the bad side of the, the town creek there, toward the bluff, basically. Um, and I got to a position where I was able to stand up and, and uh, flip my kayak back over. Um, uh, but in the process, I had lost everything except for one fishing combo. Uh, which was a Bass Pro Shops crank and stick um, and my tackle bag. That's the only thing I had left and my milk crate, of course. Um, but I had my uh, gear all tied in with, with uh, ties. Uh, they were Velcro, Velcro based and you know, it was just uh, the, the wave hit me hard enough to rip my gear out of the Velcro and uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, I guess lesson learned. Uh, I mean, those straps were only two bucks a piece on Amazon, so uh, there you go. Invest in better straps, huh? Um, anywho, uh, I got my kayak flipped back over, but I had lost my paddle and everything else. Um, so I was waiting for some boat traffic to come by. A uh, few, few people came by didn't see my waves of desperation or my whistle or uh, anything else but a fellow competitor came by and uh, saw me and, and he had a Hobie uh, Mirage Drive kayak um, so he didn't really need his paddle. He lent me his paddle and I paddled back across Town Creek, uh, uh, called my wife and we uh, uh, drained the kayak. And, you know, off, off we went back to uh, the weigh-in. Um, of course, I told uh, the director, Terry Manley, what had happened. Um, he made an announcement uh, to the crowd and, and the good folks there. They uh, came together and made sure I had enough uh, fishing poles and life jackets and, and a paddle to um, fish the, the rest of the tournament. And uh, that was really kind of them. And uh, I did a Facebook post about it, uh, and I'll link that down at the bottom. Um, but if y'all's in the market for any uh, fishing equipment, uh, just take a look at uh, their sponsors and uh, you know, buy some equipment from their sponsors. Uh, Terry Manley is uh, the owner of Manley Rods. Um, they make great, great rods. Uh, I bought uh, a couple of them. You know, lost a couple of them. Won a couple, lost, you know, I lost all my manly rods, basically, basically. Um, and that was a shame because they're, they're really quality rods, but uh, uh, good news is I have new manly rods on order. It's the new Black Ops series, um, due in February 28th, 2017 here, so uh, I've had them on order for quite a while, and I'll be excited to get them. Um, you know, I can't wait to, to get out there and, and put some reels on these things. Uh, I'm a lose reel lose guy, uh, just in case you're wondering. I uh, lost a lot of good lose reels that day. Um, but I can't wait to slap some new lose reels on these uh, Terry Manley Black Op rods, Black Ops rods, and uh, get there and do some MTB slams for you. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I'll save my boxes up through March there, and uh, I'll go out and do a super slam, try to catch a fish on each lure out of all three of the boxes. So that should be interesting. But anyway, on with the story.
because it's a little interesting. Um, so I get the, the back at the hotel there, and uh, you know the the kayak's in pretty bad shape. It's got some dents, and, and it's you know it's just basically kind of bent out of shape at the bow. Uh, the the cover for the the bow won't fit. It's not watertight anymore, but you know, I, I make the repairs the best I can. And uh, next day I decided to go out into uh, Polcat, uh, the Polcat uh, area. Uh, if you're familiar with Gunnersville, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it's just a cove that was uh, close to the hotel where I was staying and uh, you know, nice protected, it's a boathouse cove. And um, you know, no no waves there, no no wind, um, and so I just needed to go someplace like that and and uh, kind of recover and focus. Um, and you know, boathouses are great uh, places to catch fish. Uh, just not that day. Um, I had launched and uh, uh, I made a couple of rounds around the uh, cove there. I uh, didn't catch anything, but I uh, met a couple of people who were fishing a different kayak tor tor tournament and uh, had a good conversation with them and, and had some fun. Um, it was about noon or so and uh, I pulled around to the side of a, a boathouse and uh, was sitting there drinking and, and eating, uh, trying to come up with a uh, game plan for the second half of the afternoon. And you got to keep in mind this this cove is no wake zone, obviously because it's a you know got a bunch of boathouses and and uh, you know you don't want to run over somebody or or damage anybody's property. And um, that was a Saturday, and of course there's local tournaments with power boats going on, and uh, there have been a few power boats back there, you know, bass boats, um, and they'd fished the cove. Well, the last fellow that went by. Uh, I guess he had fished a cove, and uh, he was in a bit of hurry to get, uh, you know, where he wanted to go. Uh, and so I was sitting there by the boathouse, and uh, dude comes flying by, full throttle, uh, probably not eight feet in front of me. Um, uh, so much so that, you know, it was close enough to scare him when he actually real realized that uh, somebody was there. Um, and uh, he swamped me. Um, I'm sure he would have. Uh, I'm sure he would have apologized if I'd given him uh, given him the chance. But uh, I, I didn't. I was uh, a little uh, hot headed uh, at the moment, uh, so I was uh, calling him every name in the book. And uh, you know uh, that that was it for that day. Um, I managed to limp back again to the ramp. Um, called my wife. We again emptied the kayak of water. Uh, went back to weigh in. You know, um, obviously day one and two didn't go so well for me. Uh, so only the top ten went on to the third day of the championship, and the rest of us who were not in top ten had what we call a uh, losers tournament. Uh, basically, uh, you know, we just pitched in and. And, uh, uh, you know, Terry Manley, again, was running it and uh, keeping track of it for us. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it was the loser's tournament. And uh, so, you know, still had a, had a chance to win the loser's tournament. <laughs> and uh, so I went out, uh, launched uh, in, on the main lake there and uh, paddled out, uh, well, probably about a mile or so. Uh, you know, fishing along the way, and I finally get to a spot where I caught uh, a few fish in practice before. Um, so I throw my spinner bait out there, bam, get a little 13 and three quarter inch uh, spotted bass, and uh, you know, it might as well have been a 25 inch bass to me. And uh, you know, I was on top of the world basically at that point, you know, woo woo. Uh, so I, you know, I, I put the fish back in. I start to paddle off, and another bass boat comes by and says, 
Well, the fellows say, I don't know much about kayaking. I'm trying to do my best Alabama here. Don't know much about kayaking, but are you supposed to be sitting that low in the water? Well, I look around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what? No, I'm not supposed to be sitting that low in the water. <laughs> so I paddle back. First, first I open my uh, battery compartment up, and there's uh, basically full uh, on my kayak there. So I was like, eh, better get my butt back. Uh, paddle as fast as I can back to the ramp, which was you know, about a mile away. By the time I get to a spot where I can jump out and not be over my head, um, I am uh, it basically looks like I'm paddling my butt across the water. Um, it uh, taking on lots of water, um, getting dragged the kayak up again. Um, call my wife and uh, empty it out, examine it, and then the the welds where it cracked, that I'd, I'd welded, had come apart and. It was just taking on too much water. I didn't have a bilge pump. I lost that on the first day. Um, you know, it uh, just did not work out. But uh, that's the reason why I ain't got no poles. Um, and I got a new kayak, though. That's uh, that's pretty cool. It's a uh, Old Town Predator XL. Um, if you might be able to tell, I'm a big guy. Uh, so I need something uh, that can support my weight and the weight of my gear and uh, allow me to stand up and, and that's what that old town predator does. Um, great kayak. Um, my first kayak, just in case you uh, wanted to know, the one that uh, I turtled was a Malibu Kayak X-Factor. Um, a fish and dive package and uh, really is a very, very nice uh, starter kayak. Um, very stable, um, but you know there's nothing that'll there's nothing that'll take a wave like uh, like I got hit with uh, and not turtle. But um, if you're looking for a good starter kayak, um, you can get them anywhere from you know nine and a half to twelve hundred bucks, uh, depending on the retailer or the outlet you go to. Um, they make a really good uh, starter kayak. They have a pre-drilled uh, Lowrance uh, transducer uh, mount on the bottom of them. So you can mount your transducer down there and put your Lowrance electronics in there with uh, relative ease. Um, but that's about it. Um, that's the reason why I have no fishing poles. I can't do MTB slams until I get my fishing poles. But uh, Anyway, I'm going to put all relevant links below. Um, and remember, guys and gals, get out there, go fishing. Take somebody who's never been fishing, or take somebody that's been. Just get out there and, and uh, um, you know, enjoy all of God's glorious wonders and, and uh, you know, tight lines. Like the video if you like. Comment below. Uh, thumbs down if you don't like it. Comment below. Let me know. I'm trying to... Trying to build uh, my skills here and uh, build the content the uh, way you guys want it. And uh, just let me know.